Gotcha. Hello everyone and welcome to my guide for the best tips that I have for fighting Safajiva in the Safajiva Siege. Before we begin, I want to correct something I said in my previous video. I thought that weakness exploit was not working on Safajiva until you broke his parts. Uh, I was actually reading a, an image incorrectly. It wasn't saying that the parts had to be broken, it was saying that the parts had to be softened. It, it, the, the picture doesn't actually describe that, you just kind of have to summarize it. I should have double-checked before saying, you know, that weakness exploit was not a good option. So I wanted to correct that. Uh, it didn't help. Somebody actually told me weakness exploit was not working, so that was part of it as well. <laughs> and when people tell me information, I, it's important for me to go out and test it, and this time I didn't, so whoops. While we're on the subject of hit zones, let's talk about exactly where you should be attacking Safajiva in order to get the most damage. So if you're using a sever weapon, you should be attacking his forearms. You could also attack his back, especially if you're going to be mounting him, you'll be attacking his back, right? So you could attack his arms and his back, and then when his head breaks, you can also attack his head. Hammers, on the other hand, are going to want to be attacking Safajiva on the head or the hind legs. What's interesting about all three damage types, Sever, Blunt, and Shot, is that they don't get very good hit zone values against Safajiva's tail. So actually, if you were going to target the tail to trying to sever that, then you probably would consider Latent Power Secret, or maybe Max Might, or maybe you would consider building the new Safajiva armor set, which gives you, like I said, 40% affinity anyways. So in other words, Weakness Exploit has some real competition these days, uh, just because you can Go for that set bonus skill and 40% more with crit eye and an augmentation or two, right? Finally, the damage type that struggles the most with weakness exploit is going to be shot type damage, right? So shot type damage is really only activating weakness exploit on the, the thin part of the wings on Safajivas, where it's kind of like another arm, right? Also, I suspect when the head breaks, you're getting good weakness exploit procs on the head for shot type damage. Don't quote me on that. Uh, I... I think I was watching somebody do a speed run and he was getting weakness exploit to activate on the head after the head broke. Okay, another thing I want to point out is that, you know, if you're going to be running, let's say, elemental ammo on a light bowgun or a heavy bowgun, and by the way, that's extremely effective to do that. If you're going to be doing that, once again, the Safajiva armor is really nice for using uh, light bowguns and heavy bowgun elemental ammo just because of the static affinity that you're getting from that set, but also because you're getting the elemental damage bonus as well. Alright, so I corrected that mistake about weakness exploit from the previous video. Let's go ahead and talk about some other new tips I'd like to share with you guys for fighting Safajiva. He's kind of a bigger, more complicated fight, so there's a lot of learning to do. Let's start with tip number one on the list is important that after you break one of Safajiva's parts, you move on to the next part. Okay, so most of you have figured out at this point that you need to be bringing Part Breaker on your builds. Part Breaker's not too expensive, right? Is it? Most of you probably have Part Breaker. And even if you can't afford to bring it, you, your mind needs to be in the right place. That you need to focus on one body part, get that part to break, and then don't continue to attack that body part. You want to move to the next one. So if you break his left arm, go for his right arm next, okay? Left arm, right arm, same with the hind legs. Break one of the hind legs, go for the other hind legs. The head breaks twice, the wings break, the back breaks, his chest breaks. You need to be focusing on the chest during the super critical state, right? That's in the stage three. And then of course, the tail, which is one of the more challenging parts to, to cut off of him. We were just talking about that. You'll want to cut the tail as well. Not to mention when you cut the tail, you get carved from the tail. So you should be carving the tail because when you're done carving the parts from that tail, don't forget any leftover Safajiva parts you have, materials you have, can be re-rolled at the Elder Melder for even more weapons or more Dracolite. Tip number two is going to be consider bringing the flash pod. Why are we interested in using the flash pods? Really, uh, pods are not too useful in this fight other than the fact that you can flinch shot Safajiva to grab his aggro. We already talked about this, but let's say you're not a player who wants to grab his aggro. Well, one of the things you might be doing is holding on to the flash pods so that when he grabs a player and jumps up in the air with the player, you can actually flash him out of that. The other thing that you can do is when he jumps up into the air to use his Sapphire of the Emperor, his ultimate attack right, there's a very small period of time where you're able to interrupt him you can do this with damage as well if you're attacking him you can knock him out of the air well you can also flash him out of the air before he uses this bomb and i find this is really useful because it gives your teammates a chance to maybe actually crowd control him so that he never gets to use it or at least they know what he's going to do next he's just going to jump back up and try to use it again this gives players a chance to kind of scatter and get behind a rock 
let's move on to tip number three. Tip number three is going to be about healing teammates. Inevitably, in the future, I'm going to be having some wide range builds for. I'm going to be having those for counter builds. I'll be showing them to you. The healing teammates in this fight is so valuable because Safajiva really has moves that have such good reach and they're just fast enough and the recovery speed is just fast enough that he's hitting a lot of your teammates and he's chipping them down and some of them he's even dealing very heavy damage to, right? So having a decent healer on the team is a big deal. But even if you're not bringing wide range and playing a dedicated healer, you can really be doing your part if you simply brought the life powders. Now here's the problem. Some of the newer players aren't going to have a stockpile of life powders. They're, you know, you got to farm them up. They're a little bit expensive. But if, if you just check the chest at the beginning of the fight, there's two life powders in there. Be sure to grab those. Don't grab everyone else's. Just grab yours. Okay, so grab two of them. And what will happen is if Safajiva ever grabs somebody, uh, you know, he's got the powerful one-shotting grab move. Well, after the move ends, your teammate gets knocked to the ground and they have fire blight and one HP. And that's when you want to heal them before that tick of fire blight finishes them off so you can protect them from that fire blight saving them from the grab once again you can also interrupt the grab with the flash pods right for tip number four, we're going to be talking about the most effective crowd control against Safajiva, and of course that's going to be mounting Safajiva. He mounts quite easily. In fact, I was playing against him with Insect Glaive one time, and I was just spamming the strong aerial slash. I don't quite remember the name of the move, but you just use it over and over again. And in the course of the third stage, I managed to get, it was like seven mounts, seven mounts. They're really powerful for this fight because when you mount the monster, when you mount Safajiva, you don't have the long mounting mini game it just immediately goes into the final stage of that mini game and you knock them over right away so this is a really effective way to crowd control safajiva in his most dangerous stage and every time i did that i found that we pretty much passed through the last stage pretty easily so how do you deal more mounting damage to safajiva in order to get more mounts in the last stage and keep them crowd controlled for your team there's primarily three ways you're going to be doing this the first way is going to be something that a lot of people have forgotten exists or, or they never knew it existed is the rider's charm the rider's charm is giving you the master mounter skill and you're going to have to give up your charm slot in order to do this but you're playing crowd control for the team you're stacking it with two other things as well there's a feline food skill you're going to be eating for called Feline Rider, and this is going to give you more mount damage. And finally, you're also going to be adding a decoration to your build. This is going to be the flight decoration, and it's going to allow you to deal more aerial damage as well. Okay, so those three things combined will allow you to get more mounts on the monster, and maybe you have another teammate who's helping you a little bit with damage. Maybe you have somebody using a hammer, and he's doing ledge hops, or a greatsword, and he's doing ledge hops. Or maybe there's two of you using the insect glaive. Either way, when you mount this guy and you knock him down, be sure to get your optimal damage combos on him while it's on the floor and then when he stands back up you just go right back to dealing mount damage again tip number five is a shorter one but it might be useful for you nonetheless if you want to get rid of Safajiva's aggro because maybe you're OP dealing tons of damage to him and he keeps aggroing you, one of the things you can do is you can actually throw down a smoke bomb to get rid of his attention. The other thing, of course, that you can do is a far cast away. And if you far cast away, you might pick up some more ammo or some more uh, just regular healing items. Of course, when you walk into the tent, don't forget, the tent automatically sharpens your weapon for you and refills your health as well. So there's other reasons to simply walk into the tent. Tip number six, when Safajiva stops to absorb the energy out of the ground, be sure to grab onto him and soften his parts. The reason why you're probably going to be using Clutch Claw rather than your regular attacks is because he becomes like damage immune briefly during the animation for his energy absorption, but for whatever reason, Clutch Claw attacks are still working on him, so I would focus on the Clutch Claw at that point. Tip number seven is one that I personally noticed. Uh, when you want to travel all the way over to Safajiva's head quickly and you find yourself at the end of Safajiva's tail, you can actually grab onto the tail and then simply click, you know, left or right on your joystick to use your clutch claw to travel all the way up to his head. His body is so large, but every time you transition from body part to body part, the game gives you like this giant leap between his limbs. And so it ends up being a faster and sometimes safer way to travel than simply running on the ground underneath him. Tip number eight is for players who love to run Divine Blessing Secret. One of the things you're probably overlooking is the fact that you can wear two more pieces of the Golden Loon Mail set. And this is going to give you the True Crit status skill, 
right? And then what you're going to be doing is you're going to be grabbing your blast weapons. We know that the blast weapons are dealing 600 damage per proc versus Safajiva. Okay, so that's quite a lot of ailment damage, and that's combining with the true critical sta uh, status skill that you're getting from the Golden Loon armor set, right? And then finally, when you move on to the Canteen, you want to eat for Feline Specialist. This is going to give you even more procs of blast, as well as wearing the Apothecary Mantle. Okay, so those three things together will let you deal more blast damage while bringing the Divine Blessing skill with you, which keeps you alive really well. For tip number nine, I just wanted to point out that, especially in stage two and three, the person who has the aggro from Safajiva can actually lead Safajiva over to a ledge and probably should, especially depending on if you have certain teammates. Like if you have a teammate who's using, let's say, a greatsword or a hammer, those teammates are going to be considering using ledge hops in order to get a lot of damage on Safajiva, as well as being able to get multiple mounts on Safajiva. So if you happen to grab Safajiva's aggro, go ahead and bring him over to the ledge. In stage three, of course, you're going to be using those explosive traps, the gas or whatever you want to call them. Uh, but once those are gone, you can still lead Safajiva over to a ledge. There are ledges in stage three uh, to abuse and to get a lot more damage on Safajiva. So even if you don't have anyone who's bringing like let's say a master mounter set still bringing Safajiva over to that ledge can give your team multiple mounts just because people are abusing the ledge hop finally for tip number 10 i once again want to help you prioritize Safajiva's chest when he's in the super critical state right the handler actually tells you oh my gosh he's in the critical state where he's going to take a lot more damage and if you do enough damage to his chest you'll actually get a knockdown on him and if you can break his chest this is worth a lot of points for your siege mode right so what's the point of killing Safajiva really if you're not getting the objectives done during the siege mode and this is why a lot of people who are trying to give out helpful tips they're saying well you need to break each part and move on because you, the ultimate goal is to get all the objectives done during the Safajiva siege, not just to kill him quickly. Okay, so again, we talked about this at the beginning, break the part, move on to the next part, and if the whole team is doing this, eventually Safajiva kind of runs out of parts to break, and you end up with only a few parts left, like probably the second head break, the chest break, and maybe the tail break in stage three. So hopefully in the first stages you got all the other parts done, and the last stage you're focusing on the, the chest and the head and the tail. All right, and that's the end of the list. If you found something here that you didn't know that you know now, consider leaving a like on the video. And if you want to join our Discord community, we have almost 25,000 people in there. It's an LFG community. You can find people to play the siege with who aren't strangers. And also we have a lot of fun challenges where you can unlock special titles for completing really difficult, you know, usually they're like solo challenges. Well, we have special titles for people who can do that in our Discord. So consider joining. There's a link, of course, in the description of the video. I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.